Hey fellow Vault Wearers, it's Angry Turtle and today I have for you the ultimate support build. It's the kind of build that will cause all your teammates to instantly fall in love with you. Because it is just so good for everyone on your team while simultaneously it is good for you. It has proper damage, it's easy to use with plenty of team focus benefits. Therefore, without further ado, let's jump into details. First, this is the special distribution before legendary perks. And here are our legendary perks. What rats, because this support need to be played at full health and in regular armor. What makes this perk perfectly fine and supportive for the support? It doesn't make sense what I just said, but you know what I mean. Next, follow through extra damage from sneak and we'll be sneaking with this build it's a stealth support after that we have some extra special agility luck and intelligence plus funky dots as poison is basically like the only thing can kill this build without this perk therefore that neglects totally this risk poison no longer any risk then this is a perfect loadout of legendary perks if you are lower level it will be actually hard to com complete this build because it's end game support but what i would recommend you to do if you miss like if your level is really low if you just need to reduce some ranks of those perks it's fine but if your level is really low you didn't even unlock all the legendary perks just go for the experience farming build first and then transition into this now Regular perks. Under strength, we have 12 strength and we have max out heavy gunner per perk cards. We have traveling pharmacy to carry more camps for us and our teammates. Concentrated fire under perception. Fireproof under endurance. Yes, both perception and endurance are low here, but that's because we need this special for charisma. We have full 15 charisma and this is something different than in all my builds. We have philanthropist as a lot of your teammates will totally neglect they need to drink and eat therefore you will do it for them by using some cheap food next strength in numbers you want to always be on team it will amplify effect of your mutations injector wherever someone go down what will be rare you will pick them up and they will have extra action points for 10 minutes this is one worth it because duration is 10 minutes therefore it lasts a little bit then tenderizer to increase your damage and everyone else's damage if they don't have tenderizer themselves. Friendly fire if anyone will be taking damage or allied NPCs will be taking damage. You can heal them with wrench from your flamer. Next, anti-epidemic. It's not necessary, but it's cool perk. Like you can use some disease cures if you will have spare to cure your teammates just in case they have some diseases. If not that, you can swap it for something else. Like a lot of those perks can be swapped, like Injector or phila Philanthropist. All those can be swapped when needed. Other options are like Rank 1 Bodyguards, Field Surgeon, Inspirational can be swapped in here. You can use Team Medic if you plan to use some stim packs instead of Ant anti-epidemic therefore there's a lot of options that's why 15 charisma you can freely swap when needed next under intelligence we have batches included as we'll be carrying a lot of flamer fuel we have scrapper and we have gunsmith as flamers normally break too fast under agility through high cut to carry food for your teammates sneak as this is a stealth build escape artist essential for stealth builds Adrenaline max out and shared as usually people do not have enough space under agility to have max out adrenaline. But you not only have enough space, but as well, you have enough charisma to share it. This is the best perk to share it in this scenario. People will love you for that. Next, dodgy. That is just in case. If you will be accidentally hit, it will help you to take way less damage. Usually you will not be hit, therefore your AP shouldn't be drained at all. Under luck, we have one gun army for creeping bosses. Ricochet to reduce damage taken if someone would actually attack it. This one can be freely exchanged when needed, like if you 
count on being hit like unlikely in normal scenario. You toss out Ricochet and no, 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 no not this one. And toss in Bloody Mess. After that, you have Class Freak to reduce side effects of mutations, Curator for your Bubbleheads, Star Jeans to keep mutations good with Salt to keep all this food for longer. Then this is the setup. Of course, Dodgy, if you think that it will be unlikely that you will get hit, can be swapped for something like Action Boy or Covert Operative for even more damage. Like, Dodgy will be way more useful during daily ops, but if you just go on normal enemies, you can swap covert operative for more damage. And that will basically cover the perk situation. Let's now go over the mutations and then gear. Under mutations, what we have here? Bird bones, extra agility and sneaking. Eagle eyes, extra crit damage, especially as well perception for accuracy. Egghead to get extra intelligence and experience. Empath. That is really important, that's for your teammates. They will be taking way less damage, you will be taking slightly more, not much, not much. You barely notice a difference, therefore not a big side effect for you. Huge help for your teammates. Herbivore to boost benefits from food even more. Marzipial for jumping, Scully skin for resistance, Speed Demon to move faster. And there should be a swear herd mentality, I don't know where it goes, I will fix it. Okay, I know what was the problem. I was not on the team. I do have herd mentality. Now I'm on the team. Normally I should have teammates, but for the purpose of this video demonstration, I don't necessarily need them. Therefore, let's carry on. Now, very important, the gear. For the weapons, you will have two flamers and one cryolator, and that's it. You don't need any other weapons, to be honest. One flamer will be possibly anti-armor or aristocrats, with vaporization nozzle installed on it and wherever you would like to use it you will need to swap the barrel to short and back to long to fix the wrench the second and third star if you have good ones good but the most important aristocrats or anti-armor this particular one is with damage while aiming next the second flamer i do recommend vampire on it and if possible, like that's the perfect roll. Faster fire rate, faster reload, that's a perfect roll. If you will not get any useful stars apart from Vampire, it's still fine. It will work just fine. Now, the difference here is we are using standard nozzle. And the purpose of standard nozzle, you will have full range without swapping barrel to short and back to long. You do lose damage, but you will be still fine. I will show you how much damage it will still do even though the nozzle is just standard one. Therefore, you don't need more damage. That will be everyday use and for teammate support, like to support your teammates, if the maximum damage is not needed. And finally, the cryolature. It can be any cryolature, but here we are aiming for the third star. You want one with less VATS action point cost. The first star and the second star does not matter. You only want less AP cost as you will be using it in VATS to cripple a wing on the Scorch Beast Queen or cripple legs in case of Colossus to make the fight easier. Now, important here is crystallizing barrel and I will show you it in action, but what it does, it makes the cryolature into a snowball machine. It's shooting snowballs and what important it does give huge range and really good VATS accuracy. It must have crystallizing barrel as that's the purpose of this cryolature. It's not as much for freezing enemies as for crippling them. And now about the armor, we are using full set of solar armor. It's especially important if your teammates are bloodied because it provides them with constant health regeneration. Therefore, your teammates that are playing with very low health Wherever they will get hit, they will quickly regenerate back to whatever percentage they're using, usually 20%, then that's super good. Only you need to be around full health, above 60%. Your teammates can be bloodied, they will benefit from this effect. Now, about legendary effects, it's hard to get a set with proper effects. Therefore, there are only two requirements. You want one piece with auto steam and one or two pieces with chameleon. If you do that, you're brilliant. If you get any more good stars, awesome. If you don't, 
does not matter. Therefore, one auto steam, one chameleon. That's what you are aiming for. You should be able to craft it without spending who know how much time farming for resources. That should be doable. Now, about the other gear like backpack, I do recommend high capacity to carry more stuff and shielded road ladders as this is like the best under armor for stealth. If you don't have it, use whatever you have the best. It's not absolutely necessary, it's just very helpful. And that being said, we covered all the setups. Let me show you how it works in action with this Vampire Flamer on some Super Mutants, as you are probably concerned if damage is good enough. And we'll be just fighting the Super Mutants on the outside, there is no need to kill too many. You will see how well stealth works. It's a full light, it's a day, sun, and look at the damage damage range there is absolutely no problem with that and we are here solo without a team for a moment we've been in danger but quickly fix itself the stealth is not always super reliable but thanks to this chameleon when you stop you will be a little bit more hidden than while moving then you should be fine you just need to do some stops if you feel like you are getting detected too easily but you shouldn't be and thanks to escape artists you should be able to run sprint across then crouch and they will lose sight of you which is very helpful and as you can see they do die real quickly uh, there is absolutely no problem my health is full even if i was accidentally hit once or twice it is okay it is okay it is not a problem now uh, let me demonstrate why we have cryolature here and how does it work and now we are taking our cryolator. Does not matter what it is as long as it's less AP. And why is that? It's because cryolator with less AP is actually really cheap in VATS with this crystallizing barrel. We somehow need to get focus on this from the Scorch Beast as she's too high and too far for me to be able to actually aim her at her wing. Oh, she's slower. Now we are aiming at her wing and look at this accuracy. It's crazy. And I fired a lot. Now she's being hit and most likely I crippled her. Uh, I'm not sure. I cannot target her in VATS yet. She's a little bit frozen. Let me see if that's the case. She's landing, therefore I did cripple her wing. Now we just we just run there, as we've been detected. But we should be tanky enough. We're changing back to the flamer. Try to dodge it back in caution. And now, okay. A little bit of danger is fine. We can still, we can still melt them and try to relocate. You can see the tankiness, by the way, but this accidental detection. Yeah, that's not the best place to stay hidden, especially without a team. As everyone is focused on me, therefore we go and just annihilate them, face tanking all the damage without the stealth bonuses. Yeah, it works. We got them. It's not necessary a solo build, but can do quite well. We killed them. And you can see my health is full, my rats is zero. Doing perfectly fine. Even when stealth do not want to cooperate, it's still fine. Now stealth seems to be working. Maybe the Scorch Beast was very perceptive. Now I have no problem staying hidden. And you shouldn't have any problem to stay hidden while playing on a team. The solo is a little bit different story. On a team, shouldn't be any issue with staying hidden. And as you can see, even though I have this empath mutation and I'm solo, I still can tank everything. Mainly because Vampire Flamer is huge healing plus passive healing from armor. It's so much healing that there is basically no way your enemies will be able to deal damage through all this healing that you have. And that that was the showcase of Cryolature. Cryolature as well count a single shot weapon for the purpose of concentrated fire. That's why max out concentrated fire will give you 20% accuracy increase with each shot from the cryolature, which basically makes it guaranteed to cripple a limp and hit it. And that's probably everything you need to know about this build. Apart from that, it's really look cool, like depend what you will use, but Flamer, if you have the red skin and if you have the proper backpack to it, it's really look badass and 
Yo team, we love you. Because this build is just so good for everyone. It's very unlikely anyone will die. You will be super useful on any type of quests and mission when there are allies that need to be healed. As you will be able to heal everyone with this flamer. And that's about it. You have good damage, you have good healing, you have everything that supports it. And that being said, thank you a lot for watching and see you all in the next one.